If the lizard gets into some kind of trouble, for example, when someone tries to eat it, the lizard can easily lose its tail. But you already knew this, right? So? This is a Madagascar giant day gecko named Mr. G. And one day his owner saw him rip his own tail off. Or rather, first, Mr. G apparently fell off a branch inside a terrarium or something and hurt his tail. There was a mark on the scales that I would call a bruise. The next day, the gecko just ripped the damaged part of the tail off and then ate it. I'm not kidding. He didn't just shed it, but intentionally ripped it off and ate it. That was something. Why would he do something like that? Yeah, people also do weird things sometimes, like biting their nails, for example. But they don't bite off their entire arm. Unlike human habits, there's a practical reason for lizards to eat their own tails. As absurd as it may sound, the tail is something like a pantry of the body. Some lizards store up to 60% of fat reserves there. Skinks that can survive 35 days without food starve to death in 24 days if they lose their tail. Geckos can survive without food for 90 days, but without a tail, they barely make it to 50. That's why many lizards who lost their tail try to find it and eat it afterward in order to restore their strength. By the way, dropping the tail is a conscious decision of the lizard. It doesn't just fall off on its own. The tail's made up of several segments, like a construction set, and breaks off only at the joints. I would even say detaches, as if one part of the tail was a plug inserted into another part, the socket. There's a reasonable question. If the tail is intentionally designed to detach and then regrow, is there any limit to that? How many times can a lizard do this trick? On average, in the wild, a lizard lives about four years, and regrowing a tail takes, again, on average, about four months. This means that the maximum number of times the average lizard can regrow its tail is 12 times. But still, it depends on the lizard species, its health, and the environment. Unlike the old tail, the new tail is made up of muscles and cartilage that's attached to the remains of the vertebrae. Lizards can't just break off cartilage in any convenient place. As I said, this happens only at the joints. Therefore, each new dropped tail will break off increasingly closer to the head. In the end, the lizard will just disappear. Now imagine the lizard is very hungry and decides to shed its tail and then eat it. And this is its last tail. This is why you can often find lizards with tails that haven't fully grown, or lizards with no tails at all. For example, a lizard with nerve damage at the base of its tail can't regrow it, so it has little choice but to adapt to a new lifestyle, and this can be very challenging. That is, of course, losing a tail is better than dying, but there are still many cons. That's pretty hard to understand for someone who's never had a tail. First of all, the tail improves balance and maneuverability when the lizard is walking, if the lizard climbs trees, the tail also works as an additional limb. Without a tail, a lizard's foraging abilities are greatly reduced. Keep in mind, the tail stores the nutrients, which means that the animal begins to starve when the tail is shed. Some lizards lose their ability to swim. It's also difficult for such lizards to maintain a leading position among their kin and find a partner. Sometimes they even lose the ability to reproduce. And if they do lay eggs, the tailless female lays fewer of them because it needs energy on regrowing a tail. Overall, it's a hard life. Naturally, not everyone can handle it. By the way, did you know that young lizards of many species often have bright blue tails? And their parents don't even have to realize their kids are going through an adolescence phase. This color was chosen by evolution itself. When potential predators attack young lizards, the predator's attention is diverted to the disposable part of the body that can be regrown. That makes sense. But why the blue color? Especially since blue tails have independently evolved in several lizard families. Scientists analyzed the regions inhabited by lizards with blue tails and found that the major predators there were either weasels or snakes. That is, animals that are especially good at distinguishing blue color, which means they'll definitely react to it. In fact, it's quite possible to distinguish an original tail with vertebrae from a regrown one. First, its color may stand out from the rest of the lizard's body if the tail's been changed recently. And second, there are completely different muscles inside the new tail. The original tail is made up of short, fast-twitch fibers, whereas the new tail is made up of longer, slow-twitch muscles. 
While the first version of the muscles boost the speed and agility of the lizard, the second one adds only endurance. In short, it's not as useful, but as you already realized, it's better to have at least some kind of tail than none at all. But not all lizards shed their tails, and you can see why. After all, what's the purpose of this trick? Distract the source of danger to escape while it looks at the tail lying in front of it? Often the shed tail also wriggles, causing genuine interest in the predator. That's why only very fast lizard species shed their tails. For slow lizards, this makes no sense. Well, okay, you shed your tail, and now what? You just waddle away? Actually, I gotta confess, the fact that lizards can just lose part of their body has always amazed me. But in fact, this is definitely not the only incredible survival strategy they came up with. Gecolepus megalepus species, which lives in Madagascar, doesn't just shed its tail, it sheds its skin. All thanks to a special layer of cells at, let's say, the base of the skin. In an attempt to break free from a predator's grip, this gecko may shear the scales along this layer and escape. That is, it literally leaves its scales to the predator, which consists of very large segments. It only takes a few weeks for a gecko to regenerate the scales, so it's actually not such a bad strategy. By the way, the scientists who investigated the unusual species managed to catch only one gecko. The rest were too quick. They just shed their scales and ran away. And yes, I agree that a gecko without scales looks like a raw chicken fillet. Though it probably doesn't know about it. <laughs> Several species of anoles native to Latin America and the Caribbean take a leap of faith to the nearest stream when in danger. They can stay there for up to 18 minutes, waiting until the land is safe. They don't even have to hold their breath. Semi-aquatic anoles have learned to create scuba gear. Well, sort of. These lizards exhale and create a giant bubble that sticks to the edge of their snout, which is covered with water-repelling scales. Each time they breathe in and out, the air bubble expands and contracts like a pulsating balloon. It's operating like the rebreathing device used by divers. You exhale and then inhale using the remaining oxygen. Of course, gradually, the amount of oxygen drops, which is why anoles can only stay underwater for a limited time. Anolis scriptus lizards, related to the species that use scuba gear, can be found in the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. And they can survive a hurricane. And not just survive, but make sure that even the strongest wind doesn't blow them away in any unknown direction. Scientists know relatively little about these lizards' behavior, diet, appearance, or habitat preferences, but they did experiments and observations and found out that this species evolved with a specific intent to survive hurricanes. To understand this, scientists had to catch 47 lizards, put them on a wooden dowel, and turn on the leaf blower, gradually increasing the wind speed, and the lizards held on. Well, for a while. <laughs> After that, the scientists analyzed the results and found that the fittest individuals had large sticky pads on the fingers, as well as long front, but short hind legs. Logically, these individuals are the ones that survive hurricanes, which means that there will be more of these lizards. The common wall gecko has the ability to change its color to match its environment and avoid being spotted by predators. So what's so special about that, you might wonder? And you'll be right because many animals use this disguise. But geckos see with their skin. If you blindfold the geckos, they still change their color as if nothing's bothering them. If you leave their eyes open but bandage their torsos, then the disguise is no longer working. This is because the skin of geckos is rife with light-sensitive proteins, aka opsins. When light enters your eyes, the opsins in your retina react by triggering chemical reactions that send signals to your brain. The same thing happens with geckos. Only except for the eyes, opsins are all over their skin. The researchers believe they can react to surrounding light levels and automatically adjust the gecko's color. The gecko itself doesn't have to do anything for it. Strictly speaking, this is not a unique adaptation. Tilapias and cuttlefish also do this, but you see, the ability to think with the skin independently of the brain is more likely to be expected from fish and cephalopods than from lizards. 
Lizards are, well, closer to humans after all. Some of the lizards are more focused on defense, shall we say, from internal enemies. Prasinohema skinks are unique creatures because they're completely green. They got green blood, green bones, tissues, even a green tongue. No other vertebrate has green blood, at least not the one known to science, all because of the incredible concentration of the bile pigment biliverdin, which comes from broken down hemoglobin. Biliverdin is extremely toxic, even a small amount of it in a human's blood causes liver damage and can lead to death. But skinks do just fine even with green blood. They seem to have evolved specifically to tolerate biliverdin because it can provide protection against plasmodium, the parasite that causes malaria. Would you agree to go green like that for health reasons? <laughs> Personally, I'm not sure. Now take a look at this cute lizard. The western banded geckos belong to the gecko family, which according to Dr. Malachi Whitford are the least intimidating animals you've probably ever met. But as soon as this gecko sees a scorpion, it goes into berserk mode. The gecko grabs the scorpion and then shakes it very fast and very hard dozens of times, also slamming the prey on the ground. It's as if this gecko is trying out for mortal combat. Moreover, the western banded gecko does this only to scorpions. First, shaking immobilizes prey about 40% of the time. And second, yes, scorpions still almost always manage to sting geckos, but it's quite difficult to inject a large dose of venom when somebody shakes you like crazy. So it's kind of like a way to make dinner as safe as possible. Break it before the dinner kills you. But my favorite adaptation of lizards to their harsh life is, of course, dancing on hot sand. If they have to wait too long for prey in the sun, desert lizards keep lifting their legs not to get burned. And it looks like they're trying to keep up with the trends. Just speed up the video, pick the right music, and you'll see it. See you later.